Hours later, the talk of the town, of course, is still that extraordinary World Cup final that saw Argentina beat France on penalties. The lift that very, very important trophy, certainly when it comes to Lionel Messi's legacy. These are just some of the newspapers in Argentina. No surprise, it's their number 10 who is at the front and centre of every paper. We welcome a man who was at the World Cup, not important enough to do the final, but he's with us still. Ian Dark <laughs> joins us. <laughs> uh, Ian, I want to get to you in a moment, but Stevie, so many people have written to us concerned. Given what happened in the Dutch game, Argentina 2-0 oh. <laughs> up in control. You chose that time to take the dog for a walk. I did. People are hoping you didn't do the same in the final. No, well, I mean, Haggis, he likes, he, he likes a routine. Right. So at 2-0, he came up yes. and started uh, sensed, barking at me. He sensed it. But he got pushed away. I'm afraid it wasn't happening. How was it for you, Stu? I don't think I've ever seen a better final of any sort. Yeah. Never mind a World Cup final. The game that you think people or players and teams will be not scared but apprehensible of opening up and giving it, giving it away too early. But this was just, I mean, Argentina, as everybody said, for 75 minutes, absolutely dominated. It was, it was where's France? Where's Mbappe? What's happened to this team? And of course, what? Five minutes later, it's 2-2. I mean, just incredible. And then from there, it never stopped. Chances, saves, goals, and then of course onto penalty kicks. I mean, it was just, just incredible to watch, and you couldn't take your eyes off it. You couldn't. It really was special, Ian, wasn't it? It was an absolute blockbuster. I'm struggling, and uh, somebody's going to come up with an idea in a minute. But I'm struggling to think of a better game of football that I've ever seen in my life. And I've seen a lot of games of football that just about had everything in terms of drama and the theatre, and it underlined really, despite all the debate and how we love the Champions League and the Premier League and, and all the other leagues uh, around the world, you can't beat the World Cup. It's just absolutely fantastic and what a, a crowning moment to have a final like that and a story like that with Messi at last winning a World Cup. Um, you know, <laughs> somebody said you couldn't write it. <laughs> No, but you, you couldn't. What was strange as well, that I've had people messaging, I'm sure you're the same, who've got no interest in soccer, but just watched that game and wanted to talk about that extra time. I was at a, sat, a, sat at a bar for lunch, mm. Coke, uh, and that's all everyone was talking about. Right. I don't even have to receive texts from people in order to get that feeling. I had that feeling in my own house, in the living room of my house. As I'm watching, we wake up, my son and myself, and we're watching. My other son, my youngest, could not care less about soccer. And I, when I tell you he could not care less, I mean he could not care less. Yep. My wife, even though she's been around the game, doesn't know anything about the game. And in fact, actually resents the game because I think <laughs> she feels like he has taken her away from her family. So there you go. Let's not go too deep. <laughs> Sorry, babe. So th th here's the thing. They are sitting watching this as if it was life or death for them, for people that have no meaning and no connection to the game, to the point to where goals are happening, people are jumping over, open over coffee tables, and I'm having to tell people, you all got to calm down, bro. You got to <laughs> calm down. I got to watch this. Can you all calm down? Everybody's freaking out around me, and I'm saying, we need to watch this game. And it's that emotion, and Ian just mentioned there, the World Cup elicits that emotion, brings up that emotion, that passion, that feeling that, that you can't quite quantify, that you cannot describe, and yet you know it's there. And if we're feeling it thousands of miles yeah. away from the game, imagine what those players are feeling. Imagine what those fans were feeling. Imagine taking a penalty kick in that environment. Imagine the magnitude of the moment and for players to be able to deliver on the storylines coming into the match is what made it so very special. That the storylines, there are always storylines coming into finals, but usually players don't deliver on those storylines in the manner in which they did in this game. It was unforgettable, is the way I would say, unforgettable. I, th I think in some ways, the fact that it was in Qatar and all the furor surrounding it brought a lot of people to watch the World Cup that wouldn't normally, just to see what it was all about. And of course, when that happens and then the players deliver on the field, all of a sudden you've got a new audience. Mm. I mean, 
you know, you're talking about your sons. My grandson never, my grandson couldn't tell you the shape of a, of a football. <laughs> but he's Gets watching his brains after his granddad. They're sitting, well, maybe. <laughs> they're sitting in school with their phones on watching it in the class and the teachers yeah. telling everybody to get their phones off because they're watching the World Cup. I mean, that's mental. Ian, what I thought was striking as well, when it comes to football, England is quite insular in the sense that we're the greatest, the Premier League's the greatest, we don't really pay much, too much attention to what else is going on. But the front page, as well as the back page, and most of the newspapers today in England were all about the final as well. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you can say that about... I, I hear this about English arrogance, but, you know, I think that England squad are the most ego-free group of players you'll <laughs> ever find. But, I mean, that's, that's a sidebar. That's a sidebar to everything because, you know, like many, many countries all over the world, England is in an ardent love affair with the game of football. And if you did not enjoy that game, you are definitely never, ever going to like the game because it, it was a game that had everything. And I'll tell you another point. We, we've been discussing on this program, haven't we, Arsene Wenger's idea, backed by a few other people, influential people, to have the World Cup every two years. No, no, and no. no again, because it's the rarity value of the World Cup that makes it so special as well. So leave it just as it is. I know it's going to be expanded to 48 teams, and hopefully they'll come up with some sensible format that keeps four team groups, because a lot of the drama in that World Cup was because of the amount of jeopardy of two teams dropping out in every group. Uh, there were so many different moments within that match, Ian. For you, which was the standout one? Oh, no question at all. The second Argentinian goal. And I bet you, Stevie and Ali as well, and probably you as well, Dan, I just jumped out of my seat at the beauty of that goal. One-touch football from deep in their own half. Every pass had to be perfectly weighted, and every pass was perfectly weighted. And then Di Maria, who deserved a goal for his scintillating display on the wing, puts it in. That is one of the great team goals ever scored, not just at the World Cup, in football. What about you, Steve? Which was the moment? Uh, the moment for me has to be the, what, 122nd minute? Mm -hmm. Emmy Martinez. Emmy Martinez. Mm -hmm. And I've heard a lot of people saying that, that Munei should have scored, but I actually don't th see it that way at all. I see it as a save. Because the kid's done exactly what the textbook tells you to do. He's one-on-one -on -one with a goalie. It's a clean volley. He's not panicked. He's not ballooned over the crossbar. He's, not, he, he's had composure. He's picked his spot. Again, the textbook tells you, hard and low into the bottom corner. Because that's the worst place the goalie wants it. It's the last place the goalie wants it. And, of course, Martinez comes up with that save. I mean, it's not a fluke. He's, he's, he's made himself big, and then he reacts to the shot. But then, having screaming at the telly that he doesn't score, yep. Argentina go up the other yep. end. And Lautaro Martinez. And Lautaro Martinez nearly scores with a header. Just, he, 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 he got in the box <laughs> too early. He couldn't get himself back out in time to redirect the header. But, I mean, that, that 30 seconds just encapsulated everything about this game and about the World Cup. It was so brilliantly special. Argentina, of course, as we mentioned, dominating mm. uh, the opening 75 minutes. We've asked you for some player ratings overall, uh -huh. Ali. I thought Emi Martinez might be higher, actually. <laughs> I, thought he, I, I thought he might get a 10, considering what he did in the penalty shootout and that save. Well, he did get a 9. I, I know, I know, but... Right? Okay, so it's not far off, and the reason that he doesn't get a 10, and Emiliano Martinez himself said it in a post-game interview as he was in tears, that he was disappointed in the fact that he gave up three goals with three shots on goal by France. And so, if he's disappointed, who am I to take it away from him? So, instead of a 10, he gets a 9. The back line was really, really good for long yeah. periods of time, but they got really disconnected in the end, and that's why they all get sevens across the board. I would say that the midfield for Argentina for 75 minutes, they were excellent, outstanding, one of a kind, special, but it was only for 75 minutes, and so they lost control. That's why they don't get tens across the board. They get nines. Di Maria does get a 10 because he wasn't involved in part of that midfield. He had come off the, off the field at that point, and I thought he was a critical piece of their success yesterday because he gave them an additional outlet, and an outlet that was productive in the attack. 
the level of activity of Julian Alvarez gives freedom to Lionel Messi to do everything that he does. And Lionel Messi, of course, comes up with a 10 because he delivered in the biggest moment of his career. Ian, were you surprised how good Argentina were for so much of this game? Yeah, I, I, I was. But you could see it, I think, in the semi-final. They'd been quite unconvincing in the group. They'd even lost the game against Saudi Arabia. But in the classic way, they got better as the tournament went on. And I think you could see that a special performance was coming from them in the semi-final. Um, and then in the final, you know, a lot of people said, oh, France, uh, maybe the virus in the camp is worse than we thought. Well, a virus was Argentina because, <laughs> you know, the way that... The way that they played, not only when they had the ball in that dynamic way, creating chances all the time, and with Di Maria running riot, they were so good when they didn't have the ball uh, at getting it back quickly. And they just bossed that game for, for 80 minutes. I mean, I think as, as brilliant as France's comeback was, uh, and Mbappé, of course, in particular, it would have been a travesty had Argentina not won because they absolutely played France off the park for most of the afternoon. Who surprised you, Stevie, from that Argentina team? McAllister. Mm -hmm. It, it kind of looks... When you watch Brighton playing, they look as though they're all the same. They're just nice footballers. But you kind of got to see a different personality of McAllister in this World Cup. Right. You kind of got to see a guy who actually has got a drive about him, a guy who can pick a pass as well, not... Not just, not just passing the ball sideways and five-yard passes. He absolutely did everything, which I don't think he, I've seen him do. Maybe I just wasn't looking for it at Brighton, because maybe that's why he's actually in this team, because he does do it for Brighton, but I just didn't see it. But, but for me, no question, he was the biggest surprise of that Argentina side for me. Well, what are you, Ali? Well, McAllister is an obvious name, and that is the best example of a player who elevates his game in the World Cup, that the World Cup has that effect on some players. Some players are pushed down by, by the pressure, some are elevated. And in this case, McAllister did that and more for Argentina. I would also say Enzo Fernandez was a player who not even Scaloni thought would have this sort of impact for this team. Because given, given what Argentina's start to the tournament had been, they had to make changes, and Enzo Fernandez was one of those changes. And, man, did he take advantage of the opportunity. That midfield for Argentina for 75 minutes against France was unstoppable, untouchable. They were elite-level sort of performance. What about that Messi chap, Ian? Not bad. <laughs> well, he's, he's from another planet, isn't he? I mean, I, I wouldn't bet against him carrying on till he's 39. Everybody said it was his farewell World Cup appearance. But, uh, you know, he just wanders around there doing nothing, doesn't he? Or appearing to do nothing. But he's doing a reconnaissance mission the whole time. He's spotting where the gaps are. And then, you know, the way he just exploded into the game. Obviously, he's the star and the rest of them, or most of the rest of them, are the chorus line. But... Uh, what a star, and I think he deserves this, doesn't he? At, at the end of what he's given to, to football these, this last decade and more, he, he deserves this. Quick shout-out to uh, Angel Di Maria. Yeah. A player who we didn't, didn't see think that <laughs> would be in the final. Mm. Not only was he in the final, but starting and having the role that he had. And if we go back to 2014, if you remember, Angel Di Maria was unable to play the final because of an injury. What a moment this must have been for him. Scoring a game winner in Copa America final at Maracaná and then having this sort of performance in the final in the World Cup. Great moment for him and for Argentina. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.